Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a live stream update video today. We'll go through some of the main news stories that have caught my attention today and also have a look at some of the comments that were left on yesterday's video and previous videos as well. We'll have a look at some of those. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm uh, sticking or persisting with the back the black background, I should say. So uh, we'll see how we go today. I've tried to improve the lighting a little bit, but I might get some type of reflection of this light over here to my left uh, on my glasses. So uh, if that does happen, I apologize in advance until I get the light set up uh, perfected. Now let's have a look today at the uh, chat section, see what's going on there. Already a bit of chat going on, which is good to see. Gino coming in from uh, Canada, um, asking about or telling about a story that he had here about bullfighting. Remember, as a kid watching bullfights on TV religiously, as, we, as with many Spaniards, with its popularity diminishing, many uh, people getting injured or killed just end it. Yeah, um... I think it'll continue for a while, Gino. I don't think uh, bullfighting is uh, going to bite the dust anytime soon. There is still popularity in some parts of the country every day, less and less, as we know, especially in the big cities. And you don't see it on television as much as you used to do, especially on free-to-air television. It used to be uh, on uh, the, the prime free-to-air channels back in the day. But nowadays, I think you have to have uh, uh, like a... Uh, a subscription to watch uh, bullfighting, I think, on TV, at least here in Madrid. Not sure what it's like in other parts of the country, but we'll see. And uh, as we know, there are people getting seriously injured because of bull, uh, not necessarily bullfighting, but uh, running of the bulls, which seems to be a popular activity, not just in Pamplona. And uh, that's what we saw yesterday. All right, what else we got going on here in the chat section? Andrew coming in from a dry and humid southeast London. Keith coming in from Birmingham, UK, flying to Murcia on Saturday. Are they still asking for COVID proof? Uh, I think they are, uh, Keith, from the UK. I think they are still asking for proof of COVID uh, and um, a negative PCR test if you haven't got uh uh, proof of COVID, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think that is the case. The UK and other non-European countries still asking for that. All right, good. Um, what else we've got going on there? We've got Babs coming in from Wales, Chris coming in from a humid Bay del Sol, Don coming in asking about the colour. The colour is the same, uh, Don. Black background. Uh, the uh, other colours haven't arrived yet, but they <laughs> will be coming in coming days. Don't worry. Uh, is that Gibraltar in the thumbnail? Asks Dave. Uh, uh, sorry, Bill. Um, no, I don't think it's Gibraltar. I don't think it's Gibraltar in the thumbnail. Can't remember what the thumbnail is today, but I don't think it's Gibraltar. Uh, so uh, I can't uh, tell you exactly where it is, but it's not Gibraltar. But anyway, Juan coming in from uh, Southwest Madrid, Cal Cadalso. Is that it? Okay, I've never heard of that place. Uh, Juan and Alison. Hope you guys are well. Now we'll have a look at the first piece of news today. We're up to 29 likes. A bit slow uh, out of the blocks today, the old likes. 109 people watching. So I'll put the like icon on the screen. So if you haven't hit that like button, please do so just below the video. As we know, it keeps me motivated. Now the first piece of news today is related to inflation. And uh, good news. Inflation moderates in August and falls by zero or 0.4 percentage points, 10.4 percent. The CPI rose by one tenth of a percentage point in August compared to the previous month, but moderated its year on year rate by four tenths to 10.4 percent, remaining at levels not seen for more than 30 years, according to advanced data published on Tuesday by the National Statistics Institute, the INE. The August figure, which should be confirmed by statistics in the middle of next month, is four tenths of a percentage point lower than the peak reached last July when the CPI stood at 10.8 percent, its highest level since uh, September 19. 84. So there we go. Inflation moderating slightly in August, down from 10.8% to 10.4%, but still high interannual inflation. That is, of course, comparing with the prices at the same time last year. 
And uh, as we know, uh, certain things drive up the cost of living, the CPI here in Spain, fruit and veg, things like that, supermarket prices, fuel, I think, is included. So those things have an influence on that. All right, what else we got going on here? We've got uh, Mark coming in from Seville. Mark, hello today. I hope you are well down there in Seville. Not too hot for you, hopefully. Philip coming in from Sussex. Una semana más. Uh, y luego de vuelta a Malaga. Good to see, uh, Philip, that you're on your way back to Malaga. Tom coming in from Finland. Barbara, Barbara saying that the color fine sound is great. Thank you very much, Barbara. I've been working on it, trying to get a better image. Not easy to do, considering that I'm not an expert with lights. A few people saying that I need to get a green screen. That could be on the cards as well. Maybe put some uh, viewers' holiday snaps up on the screen behind me. That could be an idea. Let me know if you think that would work. Let me know. Uh, Maga coming in from Ireland, less than 13 hours to boarding, heading off to El Campello, Maga. I think it is for you down there in Alicante or Valencia, the Valencian community anyway, El Campello. Uh, Jose Antonio saying that I've forgot the sunglasses, blacker and no reflections. Maybe that's a, a trick for the next time. Uh, sunglasses, Jose Antonio. Mick coming in from, uh, what else we got going on here? He, he's saying, ignore my comment from yesterday. Uh, as you logo letters are black, they won't be seen on a black background. Uh, that's probably true. That's true. Yep. Um, I've got a different logo. Not sure whether if it's white or not, but I could uh, change the logo. I haven't got it on this program here. I've got it on my laptop. So that's the reason why the old logo is showing up there. But I need to modify that logo exactly if I'm going to be using a black background. Thanks for that, Mick, for pointing that out. All right, what else we got going on here? Background looking good. Thank you very much for that relaxing, soothing music. And uh, also Wackett coming in from Aragon. Oregon, sorry, not Aragon. Oregon. All right, good. Now, we'll have a look at the second piece of news today. I'll come back in a minute to the chat section. We're up to 67 likes. So again, if you haven't done so yet, please hit that like button just below the video. And we'll have a look at the second piece of news today. And it is that uh, Prime Minister Sanchez, or the president of the government here, Pedro Sanchez, was welcomed by Scholz in uh, Germany with energy crisis and European interconnections in the spotlight. The two most important leaders of the European social democracy, Olaf Scholz and Pedro Sanchez, met today at the Messeberg Palace, 70 kilometers from Berlin, to strengthen their political alliance and to set out a common line on the most important issue of the moment, the energy crisis and the possible alternatives to Russian gas, including the inter interconnection between Spain and Europe through the Pyrenees, the so-called Midcat pipeline, which has the enthusiasm of Madrid and the backing of Berlin, but is clearly opposed by France for the time being. So there we go, Mr. Sanchez meeting with Mr. Schultz there in uh, Berlin. And as we see here, according to El País, the two most important leaders of European social democracy, Mr. Sh Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Schultz, meeting there today in order to talk about that gas pipeline, which, as we know, uh, France is not too keen on. But apparently there's a change, and we'll have a look at that in a moment, as uh, Fra uh, France, after seeing the meeting today between the two leaders, the uh, Spanish leader and the German leader, might have changed their mind on the gas pipeline. Uh, because as we can see here, France is now open to examine Germany and Spain's proposal to resume MidCat. France, which has so far opposed the MidCat gas pipeline project, linking its territory with Spain, is going to examine this possibility because the Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez and the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who are friends, in inverted commas, are asking it to do so. This was stated by the French Minister of Economy, Bruno Le Maire, in statements to the press on Tuesday during his speech at the Summer University at the French Employees Association, MEDEF, in Paris. So there we go. The France, uh, the French, or France, now open to examine Germany's and Spain's proposal to resume the Midcat gas pipeline. So... A twist in that story. Obviously, when the uh, uh, French saw the Germans and the Spanish together, maybe they decided that they need to get on board with this project to pump that gas from Spain and Portugal into Germany and other European countries that uh, are probably going to have serious gas connection problems this year because, as we know, Russia is 
mucking around with that. All right, what else we got going on here in the chat section? Paul coming in from Ringwood. Nice sunny 20 degrees there today. Fantastic. Lenny from San Francisco coming in. Hello, Paul. Paul says, good to see me back in Madrid. Uh, I wish I could say the same, Paul. <laughs> I would prefer to be somewhere coastal, but uh, what can we do back here in uh, Madrid in the uh, dry dust bucket that is Madrid? Erica coming in from uh, Terrassa. Tobias coming in from uh, San Lucas. Still down in Cardiff there, Tobias. Good to see. James coming in from 44 degrees in Arizona. And Donald coming in from Loja, where he says it's raining today. So a bit of change down there in Loja, Granada. Donald, uh, enjoy the rain. Enjoy the rain. I'm sure it is needed in some parts of uh, Andalusia. All right, now let's have a look at uh, a, another piece of news. This one here about tourist taxes. Which other cities in Spain want to, in, want to introduce a tourist tax? Valencia is not the only Spanish city that is in favour of introducing a tourist tax, nor is it the only one in which the political forces in government have differences on how to apply it. As we can see here, Seville, Malaga, Granada, Santiago de Compostela and San Sebastián are determined to apply the new tax along the lines of the local government of Valencia. So there we go, tourist tax uh, on the, on, the, on the cards. Uh, the plan of various cities here in Spain, Seville, Malaga, Granada, Santiago and uh, Santiago de Compostela and San Sebastián, along with Valencia. I think it's the, is it the Valencian community or is it just Valencia City? Not sure. But uh, apparently it's hit, of a, it's, it's hit a political hurdle in Valencia. The, they can't seem to agree the different political groups in power down there. So it's been put on the back burner or they haven't been able to pass it. So we'll see what happens. But as we could see in that article, uh, quite a few cities here in Spain, I think six in total, are also planning to introduce a tourist tax uh, in the near future. So good or bad, what do you think of tourist taxes? Personally, I don't like them. I think that government should be able to raise revenue, not tr trying to squeeze tourists for extra dollars. Some people seem to be in favor of them. I've seen comments on this channel saying that they are necessary in order to help pay for the infrastructures and things like that, which get put under pressure when uh, tourists come into a place. For example, the um, Balearic Islands, I think there's a tourist tax in place there. And of course, some people seem to say that obviously if you have uh, millions of people visiting each year, why not slap a tax on them to help pay for the infrastructure costs? That's one argument. But uh, as I said, maybe governments, instead of going down the easy route of uh, slapping tourists with a tax, should maybe try to uh, get it from somewhere else. That would be my opinion on that. But uh, let's start the debate. What do you reckon? Uh, tourist tax, yes or no? Good idea or bad idea here in Spain. Jose coming in from uh, Tampa, Florida in the US. Uh, hello, Jose. Hope all is well. Daniel just moved to Madrid from Sydney. Hola, hombre, he says. Hello, Daniel. I hope all is well in Madrid, that you are enjoying it. Coming in from Sydney, probably a lot drier in Madrid than it, in, than it is than it is in Sydney. <laughs> Sydney been having a fair bit of rain recently. We haven't got that in Madrid. What else we got going on here? Placido coming in from Southampton. Hello, Placido. Uh, Capileida, Alpujarra, Karen, Janet from Oxford, and uh, Bob coming in from Calpe. So plenty of activity in the in the chat section today, which is good to see. Now we're up to 103 likes, 183 people watching. I'll just put the little like icon back on the screen there. So if you haven't hit that like button just below the video, please do so. All right, now we'll have a look at the final piece of news today, which is this one here. I'm going through fairly quickly the news today. This one here, lack of qualified civil servants, according to El Mundo, is hampering the implementation of EU funds. The government had promised cruising speed in the execution of European next generation funds in 2022. But the truth is that in the first half of the year, it has only dispersed 9% of the 28 billion, 28 uh, 1,000 million, 28 billion euros it had budgeted for this year. In addition to bureaucratic barriers and the collapse of procedures, one of the main reasons for this slow pace of management is the lack of staff in public administrations to carry out this work. 
So there we go. Apparently, the European Union Next Generation funds 28 billion euros in the budget this year. Only 9% has got through uh, to the autonomous communities because of a lack of qualified civil servants. Now, you can believe that if you want to or not. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It sounds like an excuse because there seem to be lots of civil servants here in Spain, so I don't know what the problem is with their qualifications and why they can't uh, hand this money out on different projects. Not sure what's going on there, but uh, that's the third or fourth time that I've read something similar in El Mundo in particular, which, as we know, is a bit of an anti-government newspaper, anti-socialist government newspaper, and uh, they quite often put stories out like this saying that that money's just not getting through because it's there's just not people qualified to uh, carry out the uh, procedures. Again, whether it's true or not, I have no idea. But as we could see here, only 9% of 28 billion. So a lot of money still sitting around. And uh, what month are we in now? The end of August, September, October, November, December. What are they going to be able to do? Are they going to be able to get all of that money out into the society? Don't know. Don't know. Time will tell. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that one and see what happens over the next few weeks or months regarding this European money. Okay, what else we got going on here? Uh, Mayank saying that, uh, yes, as a third country citizen, which we all are, uh, Mayank, uh, well, except if you belong to the European Union, that is, I can confirm that you will have to show, uh, show proof of vaccination, travel back to Spain last month. So there we go. Uh, Mayank saying that that is the case. You need to show proof of vaccination if you are not a European Union citizen. You belong to one of these third countries, which is the case of the United Kingdom at the moment. All right, good. What else we got going on here in the chat section? Um, D asking a question about dogs. How easy is it to own dogs in Spain and rent apartments and on public transit? Well, the good news there, D, is that it's a lot easier now than it used to be, especially when it comes to public transport. I think you can take dogs on the Madrid Metro now. Uh, you can take them on the Barcelona Metro, pr probably other transport systems around the country. Uh, as long as, I believe, uh, I think you have to have a muzzle on the dog's mouth, I think, or on the on the dog's, um, on the, well, on the dog's mouth, yeah. So I think you have to have a muzzle. But again, correct me, somebody, if I'm wrong on that. But you can take the Madrid Metro nowadays with a dog. Uh, and when it comes to renting apartments, it depends on the landlord. On the landlord. So a lot of times you'll see no pets directly in the description of the place that you're looking for. But uh, you can also find uh, dog-friendly landlords that will allow you to have a dog, <clears throat> providing that the dog you know, doesn't damage the flat or anything like that. So I don't think you're going to have any too many problems with a dog, uh, D, to find a place to rent or to travel on public transport in Madrid. I'm not sure what's going on in other cities, but in Madrid you can pub tra travel on public transport with a dog. But uh, again, we'll start the conversation in the chat section if anybody else has better information on, tr on uh, pets here in Spain, getting uh, rental apartments and traveling on public transport, let me know. Not sure whether you can take a dog on a bus. Not sure about that just yet. But uh, on Metro Systems, yes, you can. It changed about three or four years ago uh, prior to the pandemic, I believe. All right, cool. What else we've got going on here? Relaxing, soothing music. Uh, La Rabita Jaén, last two days. Temperature's down a little. Good to see. Uh, what else we've got going on here? Uh, Paul Nipper. Do you know anything about houses which have been built on illegal land in Spain? Uh, yeah, I've heard that that was a problem in some parts of Malaga, Paul. Uh, in fact, the Spanish actor Antonio Banderas apparently bought a house that was built on illegal land or uh, it was an illegal build. Not sure what happened to that, whether it was uh, pulled down or um, demolished. Not sure what happened with Mr. Banderas's house, but it was in the press a while ago and uh, other people in the same situation. And it has been a problem in some parts of the country that they build on land that is not um, uh, able to be built on because it hasn't been rezoned probably. That's one of the reasons. And uh, obviously, if the council uh, wants to, they can demolish your house. But again, if anybody has uh, more information on that or first-hand experience, let us know in the chat section, please. 
All right, what else we got going on here? Angela, hello, uh, regular viewer Angela in the chat. Thank you very much for that, Angela. Elaine, another regular viewer from uh, New Jersey, NJ, I believe that is. Ted Wheeler coming in. Hello, Ted. Hope all is well. Uh, from Bahrain is Ted. And um, Chris O saying here there that the tourist tax is a good idea, providing the monies are actually given to the local council. Yeah, probably it would be the local council that puts it into place or maybe the autonomous community. And of course, it depends where it goes after that. But again, it's all about the, the distribution of those taxes. Thanks for the uh, comment there, uh, Chris O. All right, what else we got going on here? Terry coming in from Moraleda de Fafayona, Granada. Difficult one to pronounce. And uh, enjoying your breakfast during my lunch break, says Jay. So obviously coming in from the United States, I imagine, Jay, if you're having lunch at the moment, considering that it's almost 8 p.m. here in Spain. Now we'll have a look at a, a comment from the other day. We're up to 129 likes. Uh, first comment from the other day is this one here from Steve. The service in banks in Spain is also pretty bad. And uh, obviously we were talking about the public service and the, the lack of service that you get there. And banks aren't much better, according to Steve. And I think that is the case. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in yesterday's video, but uh, I think, Steve, when it comes to banks, uh, they can be problematic. So absolutely right there. Um, civil servant mentality for a lot of people working in bank branches, I think, which is the reason for the lack of service. Uh, basically, they just don't want to deal with people. That's been my experience with banks. Not so bad nowadays because some of the security measures have been taken away. But before we, but before even to get into a bank here in Spain was a, was a difficult process. You normally had two uh, glass doors that you had to go through. You had to put some type of um, metal detector as well. The bank sometimes didn't want to open that if you looked a little bit suspicious. So a little bit easier today, as I said, now you can just normally walk into banks because of the electronic banking. But when they used to hold cash, it was a terrible experience even trying to get into a bank, let alone deal with the people in the bank. All right, good. Now we'll go into a, uh, another comment here from Simon. From what I gather, the driving licenses are swappable for the Spanish in the UK, but the UK in Spain uh, is due to data protection issues raised over access to the UK licensing authority. Nothing has happened because, and nobody will say this, it's the summer holidays. I've had resident friends had their, uh, had their licenses taken away because they didn't swap them in time. So this debate still goes on. The problem for uh, people from the UK that ha were late swapping their licenses or didn't swap them in time and of course, no agreement has been reached yet between the Spanish government and the British government to able to exchange or swap these licenses over, which, as we said the other day, is um, a, a real inconvenience for a lot of British people that uh, are not in that situation. And you don't want to have to go through what I had to go through and what other Aussies and people from the States have had to go through Canada and basically every other country in the world. When you come to live in Spain and you want to drive, you have to go through the driving school again, which uh, is not pleasant when you're a 42-year-old man, which was my case, uh, having to sit in a room with a bunch of kids going for their driver's license. But So if you can avoid that, better to avoid it. All right, good. What else we got going on here? Manilva, Bert, a couple of weeks visiting. Hello, uh, Bert. Hope all is well. Alan Edge here. Uh, Olo Estuardo. Oh, no. Ice Age on the way. 10th. I don't know what that's going on about that comment there, so I can't comment. Uh, image is fine, says Denise. Me gusta mucho. Thank you very much, Denise. Ola from uh, Tio Allen, San Diego. will be in El Puerto next month. Back to Spain next month, Alan. Hope you're enjoying your... Uh, time there in San Diego, California. And uh, Stu from Tobias wanted to send you a video of the San Luca horse race, but it was too big to email. I don't know if your email will allow a hyperlink. Yeah, the email will allow a, hyper a hyperlink, but you're right, depending on the size of the video, Tobias, I'll just put this comment on the screen, probably wouldn't get through because it would be considered too big by Gmail. So Put a link uh, in a uh, if you've got it somewhere stored, and uh, I'll uh, check it out later uh, today, Tobias. If you send it to me, thanks. All right, good. What else we got going on here? Excellent improvement, says MSK. Thank you very much. 
Bit of a controversial topic, the new backdrop. Some people like it, some people don't. I'll have a look at a couple of comments in a minute about that. But uh, basically, I'm just trying to uh, mix things up a little bit with this background, depending on the type of video that I'm doing. And I get a few other backgrounds as well. Some people say that they prefer the uh, couch in the background or the sofa in the background so that they can see the dog when she sits there. She's on the floor at the moment over there. But uh, yeah, I'm, I haven't really come to a definite uh, conclusion on what I'm going to do, but experimenting at the moment with the backdrop. So uh, it'll be like this for the next uh, week or so until a few more colors arrive. All right, next comment. Let's have a look. Igor, which parts of Spain are least humid on average but still offer decent sunny, sunny climate overall? Keep up the good work, Stu. Yeah, Igor, good question. Uh, from what I've found in my travels around the country, whenever you go to a coastal area, it's uh, humid. Okay, so you get good weather, but uh, the humidity can be an issue. I remember going to Alicante a few years ago, I think it was in July, opened the door of the car and bang, the humidity slapped me in the face like a wet fish. The north of the country similar, but the weather's not great there. Malaga are also very humid. I think Cardiff maybe, and again, uh, anybody in Cardiff, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Cardiff, because of the wind coming in off the Atlantic there, it's it doesn't have the same humidity as a Malaga or an, or an Alicante, but again, I could be wrong. But if you want to avoid humidity completely and get decent weather, probably you have to live inland. So whether that's somewhere in Andalusia living inland where the weather's good, maybe in Jaén or somewhere like that. In Madrid, it's very dry. There's no humidity in Madrid. There's no humidity in the central part of the country. Um, so, but again, the weather in winter is pretty cold, but it's sunny. So probably living inland away from the coast if you don't like humidity, Igor. That's, at least that's what I would say. But again, uh, if anybody has better information, please in the chat section, let me know if you live in a part of Spain where the weather's good and it's not humid, let us know in that chat section because from what I've seen, especially coastal areas, the humidity can be a killer, especially in the summer. All right, what else we got going on here? D also asking another question here. So two questions for D. Do you recommend hiring a gestor? Yes, yes, and yes. How much do they cost? Well, it depends. And where can you find a gestor? Basically, in any high street, you will see two or three offices uh, that belong to gestores, gestores administrativos, and they take care of a lot of things for you. But of course, you have to pay, depending on uh, what you need done, D. Um, but a simple um, tramite, as they call it here, so a simple thing, maybe 50, 60 euros, a bit more complicated if it's dealing with residency, uh, but you know, it depends what you're doing and uh, different prices according to um, according to the gestoria, so you can shop around as well. But uh, if you're self-employed, let's say like many people are, you're paying, paying around 30, 40 euros a month maybe to have a gestor, or you can pay every three months if you like, 90, 100 euros. Basically that's what you're paying to do that type of paperwork when it comes to running a business or a small, small business as a self-employed person and to get other things done around 50, 60, 70 euros, for example, traffic tramites, traffic uh, dealings with the traffic department, probably around that, but again, shop around for a gestor. All right, good. What else we got going on here? Gail, Linda Tarde. It is indeed. Alan saying a green screen would be good. Uh, yeah, green, green screen has been a popular uh, comment recently, Alan. Andreas coming in from uh, St. Louis. Hello uh, there. Uh, what else we got going on here? Alex coming in from Romania. And uh, Vimal KS coming in from... Uh, India, asking about the cost of living. Hope the cost of living is not very expensive. Well, fortunately, Vimal, it goes up every year. It goes up every year. And uh, there's a bit of a squeeze on at the moment with high inflation. And uh, they're trying to uh, get an increase in salaries as well. The unions are. But uh, whether they're successful, I have no idea. All right, good. Now we're up to 144 likes, 195 people watching. I'll just put the little like icon back in the screen. So if you haven't hit that like icon just down there please do so just below the video hit the like uh button please and uh, we'll see if we can get over the 150 160 mark by the time we finish in a few minutes time here with the video back into the chat section here what else we got going on here chris saying always use a gestor there we go some uh 
uh, direct comment there from Chris. Always use a gestor. I got residencia with 17 days of arriving using my gestor. If you want to get things done, they normally know what to do. You're not going through this bureaucratic labyrinth, which uh, Spain can be, and uh, the gestores know exactly what to do, when to do it, and uh, they're normally it's normally money well spent, in my opinion, of course. People want to do it themselves to deal with the government, do all of these things, no problem, you can do that. But my recommendation, and Chris's as well, always use a gestor if you can. All right, good. What else got going on? Grant coming in from Seattle in Asturias. Hello, Grant. Anonymous function. Uh, Let's have a look. Um, Asking about uh, any possibility of the day-to-day price commodities coming back to their normalcy, or is inflation going to continue for a long period? I think uh, the finance minister or the minister of the economy here in Spain said that uh, inflation will start to, uh, high inflation will start to drop off the closer we get to the to, to the end of the year. That's what she said. Don't know whether that's going to be true or not. Uh, but uh, there's various theories on the inflation situation. But uh, I think she said the other day, Ms. Calvino, that they expect inflation to drop uh, in the months leading up to Christmas. So we'll see if that is the case or not. Not sure. The Spanish government is very upbeat about the economy, saying that it's going to grow by 4% this year. They're sticking to their guns on that, whereas a few other people have changed their predictions regarding the economy. But the Spanish government, of course, um, what else would they say? They're not going to tell us that we're uh, in economic ruin, which is what the opposition is doing. The Spanish government sticking to their guns and saying that all is going well, 4% growth this year, and Spain is uh, growing more than other European countries. But remember that we still haven't hit pre-pandemic. Uh, we haven't got back to pre-pandemic growth, I don't think, yet, where other European countries have already done so. But uh, we'll see what happens. All right, good. Correlejo, uh, 28 degrees there today. Tourists back in numbers, says William. Yeah, plenty of tourists around Spain. I think even September is going to be a busy month as well, William. So uh, good news for the tourist industry. Sam coming in from an overcast Seville, spitting with rain at the moment. Uh, welcome change. Welcome change, uh, Sam, down there. What else we got going on? Uh, Philip coming in. A lot of European cities raised a tourist tax, he says, about uh, 12, sorry, 1 to 2 euros per stay, which is hardly noticeable. If it goes into improving facilities both for locals and tourists, it is fine. There we go. It's an interesting uh, point of view there from Philip. I think the Valencia tax is going to be around 12 euros, I think, per stay. I think. I think I read that somewhere. Could be wrong. But uh, I think that's the figure that uh, I saw. Brian coming in from La Marina, small shower down there, Uh, clear the air, exactly, that's what a a nice uh, rain shower does, Brian, it cleans the air, gets rid of some of that dust which is in the air. Ray saying that uh, bad idea, it will send more tourists to Turkey, I think, uh, (laughs) yeah, Turkey, that that could be an option, or Greece, I think uh, Turkey has serious inflation problems, problems at the moment, Spain's inflation woes are nothing compared to Turkey's, but uh, maybe a popular tourist destination, as um, Ray says. Anonymous Function, also from India, will be moving to Spain very soon. Is there any way that I can contact you? Uh, Not talking to me, talking to uh, Maynak there. So if you can get back to uh, Anonymous Function there, please do so. Um, What else we got going on? Denise saying, are they trying to shoot themselves in the foot by taxing us, tourists? Don't know, uh, Denise. Uh, Some people could come to that conclusion. Absolutely. What else we got going on? And Janet saying that she's not against the tourist tax. I'm used to paying it in other European cities. Although it brings tourist money to a country, they have an impact on the facilities and the infrastructure. Absolutely they do, Janet, especially when it comes to waste removal and things like that, rubbish, uh, and all of those things that uh, people coming into your city Uh, all of the other problems that it creates. Public transport is used by more people, all of these things, and, of course, it's paid for by locals in taxes. So some interesting points there when it comes to tourist taxes. Thank you very much for the input. Now let's have a look at another comment here, if I can, from Simon. We saw that one already. <laughs> so let's have a look at another one. Here we go. Rob Clayton. Wow. Ban all festivals when someone dies? Question mark. 
So music festivals including Glastonbury, sporting events, beach festivals, etc, etc, etc. How about respecting people's traditions and rights to attend if they so desire? That is, allow them to live their lives as they wish. So Rob, obviously not happy with something that I said yesterday about maybe banning bulls from festivals here in Spain. That, I didn't mean to ban the whole festival, uh, Rob, just to take away the bull element and perhaps save the odd life or two because I think uh, around, uh, from what I've read recently, we saw somebody the other day die in one. I think seven people in Valencia have uh, either died or been seriously injured with these bulls attending festivals. And if you can get the uh, bull element out, I think it would be a lot safer, especially when, it, when it's these running of these bulls that have these huge animals hurtling down a street uh, chasing people and sometimes they veer off course which is what happened the other day and uh, stuck their uh, horns through somebody's neck and um, he didn't survive he didn't survive he was in the wrong place at the wrong time but hey put it down to the uh, the culture and traditions shall we what do you reckon let's put it down to the culture and traditions yeah he died but ah, it's a tradition all right what else we got going on here Mick, thumbnail is just down the coast. Calpe, I think it was uh, Mick actually the other day. I think it was Calpe. What else we got going on here? Steve coming in. Uh, asking about, uh, very informative as, as usual. I'm curious about how countries in the EU feel about Spain refusing to cut back 15% of its energy while others are cutting back more. Yeah, it was uh, controversial. We don't really get the other European countries' point of view here in Spain. We only get the Spanish point of view a lot of the time, Steve. And uh, as we know, other European or European Union countries having to cut back 15%, Spain and Portugal 7%, because they reached a separate agreement, basically. So uh, that's the reason. Are the other European Union countries happy? No idea. I presume they are not. But uh, it is the agreement that the governments uh, reached with the European Union. So... Um, it was a deal that was done by the Spanish government. So, uh, but if anybody's in another European country and you have seen some feedback about this, let us know. Ellen coming in from Fuerteventura. Roger coming in from Gibraltar. So uh, plenty of uh, activity from different parts of Spain and the world today, which is good to see. And uh, Erica saying about Asturias is heaven for renting property in summer. Uh, let's have a look at this comment here. I think it's related to traveling with animals on public or dogs on public transport. Renfe, Cercanías, and generally that the Catalonia is okay if your dog is muzzled. Buses in Catalonia is forbidden unless they are help dogs. Yeah, I thought that was the case with bustles. Thanks for that input there, Erica. The Metro, I think, as I said before, here in Madrid, the dog has to be muzzled as well, even if it's not considered to be a dangerous breed. Or maybe it has to go on some type of little um, uh, travel uh travel carrier thing that you can take your dogs if it's small enough of course all right what else we've got going on here well pronounced estuardo thank you very much alan for that uh, compliment uh what else we got going on here edward coming in from oklahoma and uh, jose antonio saying that banks in town used to be gentle used to be gentle but not anymore obviously jose antonio that's it banks uh, not the best customer experience in my experience over the years dealing with banks. In fact, I would say it has been a terrible customer experience and I, for one, am very happy that a lot of banking can be done online because you take that visit to the bank branch out of the equation. So for me, that's a pro. All right, we're up to 166 likes. I'll put the like button up on the screen one more time just in case you haven't hit that like button yet. As we can see just uh, here below, hit that like button and uh, uh, it uh, will keep me motivated for the next two or three minutes while I uh, continue with this video. We'll have a look at one more comment here from Vicky. Ha, 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 not that you asked me. I like the sofa with your cute dog in the background. Enjoy the updates. Yeah, the dog seems to get a lot of uh, comments and a lot of attention on the channel. Uh, hasn't been featuring too prominently in recent times, uh, old Mia. Ever since we came back to Madrid, she has been suffering from the heat. She spends most of the time over there on the floor uh, in a shaded area trying to keep out of the heat. And uh, 
is only up and about when it's time to eat or when it's time to go for a walk. The rest of the day, she is in a cool spot. She's not even sitting on the couch at the moment because the couch obviously is too hot. So when the weather starts to cool down, I might consider putting putting a, a chair behind me here where the dog can uh, feature because, as I said, two or three people I have seen in the chat section or the comment section recently asking where Mia is. And uh, Mia, of course, a fundamental part of the channel now or has been for the last year or so uh, that she has been with us. So, uh, yeah, we could do that as well. Maybe get the dog in the screen somehow. Uh, not sure how I could do it with this tight angle. Maybe I'd have to set the camera back a little bit to get some type of couch or chair in the background here and uh, have a little Mia sitting there in the winter months, of course, when it's a bit cooler and she's not suffering from the heat. Now we'll go back here into the chat section quickly before we finish. We're up to the 40 minute mark here. We've got a super chat from Paul. Thank you very much for that, Paul. Greatly appreciated. Five pounds. Thank you very much for the great informative show. Thank you very much for the super chat, Paul. Uh, what else we got going on here? Uh, Tobias saying will do. He will send me that link. Thank you very much, Tobias. I'll wait for that. Um, Hel uh, Heron asking about a green screen. Yeah, Heron, I said that uh, at the beginning of the video, I think that a green screen is on the cards. I'm getting a, a gray background, the black background, and a green screen as well. Uh, and the plan is to, every now and again, maybe during these live streams, if uh, people can send me in their favorite holiday snaps from Spain, I could stick it up on the background there, uh, go through some of those different parts of Spain that people like, Some of have a look at some, uh, some people's uh, photography skills and we could stick them up on the back of the screen there with a green screen. If I work out how to do it with this program that I'm using here, I think I can do it, but uh, I'll work on that. So that could be an idea for the future. But uh, yes, Heron, I have thought about a green screen. Thanks. Good. Now what else we've got going on here? Maura coming in from uh, Jerez de la Frontera. And uh, here we go. Alan's got back about Cadiz. Low humidity because there are coastal deserts. So there we go, Cardiff, an area with low humidity, or at least lower than places like Malaga, Alicante, Valencia, where they can be quite hot and humid. So uh, on that note, I'm going to wrap the live stream up. Thank you very much for your participation today in the chat section. Uh, plenty of activity there, which was good to see. We got up to 183 likes. Uh, thank you very much for uh, hitting that like button. Sorry if I didn't get through everybody in the chat section today. I can see a few here. Jake coming in from Wales, Welsh Todo uh, also there. Uh, Zhao coming in from uh, Portugal. They have a great life apparently. So plenty of activity. Sorry that I couldn't go through all of the chats today. Just too many to go through in the time that we have. But uh, I'll wrap the live stream up here now. Thank you very much for participating in the chat. Thank you very much for viewing. I'll see you in the next live stream, which will be on Thursday, and uh, maybe a walk around video tomorrow, depending on how I feel and uh, whether I wake up in a good mood or not. So we'll see. But anyway, thanks for uh, watching today. I'll see you on Thursday in the live stream if you decide to come back. So uh, have a great day. Hasta luego. Hasta entonces. Goodbye.